Hello everyone and welcome back. A few of you have requested that I cover a game from the computer match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish 8, which took place in London. There have been quite a few games already covered by other YouTubers, so hopefully this game that I've chosen has not yet been covered. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Alpha Zero, it is an artificial intelligence uh, AI software developed by DeepMind. Alpha Zero was not given any human ideas or input about the game of chess. For instance, uh, the importance of having more material. Instead, it was only given the basic uh, rules of the game. Because of this, Alpha Zero's play can sometimes seem weird and unorthodox. So Alpha Zero basically learned how to play the game, how to master the game through self-training, or in other words, playing many games against itself. And through this, it has managed to develop its own set of ideas and principles, and this has allowed it to become one of the strongest chess entities on the planet. So in this game that I'm about to show you, Alpha Zero had white, Stockfish had black. So Alpha Zero opens with D4. Uh, so we can pretty much see from the games that it prefers d4 over e4 for some reason. So here we have the Queen's Indian Defense. I'm not going to delve too much in the opening for this video. So these are pretty much standard moves that have been played. So here after Queen b3, c5 was actually the novelty in the position. White played bishop to f4. We have knight a6, rook f to d1, pretty logical moves, c4 kicking back the queen, knight b4, queen back to c1, queen d7. So here it seems like black is completely fine out of the opening. Here alpha 0 plays h4, just gaining more space on the king side. We have rook a to c8, a3 kicking the knight back, knight takes c3, b takes, knight back to c6, and queen to b1. A flexible move, looking at both sides of the board. Also, uh, just restricting black from expanding on the queen side. So here, rook c to e8, putting a bit of pressure on e2, so rook to e1. Here, stockfish played knight to a5, possibly trying to stick the, the knight on b3. Knight g5 from alpha 0, threatening mate on h7 and tempting black to make a weakening move. So here f5 played from stockfish, you can see now the square is weakened. So knight f3 looking at e5 immediately, we have bishop f6 trying to cover that, and rook to a2, probably anticipating this knight to b3. So here h6 from stockfish, I don't quite understand the purpose of this move because this weakens the g6 square, Perhaps Stockfish uh, didn't quite know how to further improve its position. And now this is where Alpha Zero shows its uh, superior positional understanding. Here he plays a4, just limiting black on the queen side, not allowing the queen to sit on the square. So black plays queen to e6, and king to h2. Seems like a strange move. In fact, Alpha Zero's next few moves seem very odd, but it will soon make sense. Bishop c8 played by Stockfish. Rook to h1, you might be thinking, what on earth is going on? Why, why put the rook back in the corner? Here, knight c6 from Stockfish. So Stockfish seems kind of clueless on how to handle this position. And now the purpose of rook to h1 becomes clear. h5 permanently fixing this weakness on g6. So if the pawn would be attacked, let's say queen f7, then now the king can step to g1, <coughs> and the rook defends h5. So here Stockfish played king to h8. Now knight to g1, and things are starting to make more sense. So king h2 made room for the knight to come to g1, and now alpha 0 wants to make use of this juicy square on g6 by planting the knight there. So here queen f7 from stockfish and bishop to f3. I mean this is just beautiful stuff. The knight also made room for the bishop to come to f3 to support the pawn. 
So here, rook to d8 played, uh, giving more protection here, because uh, this pawn on e2 is very solidly protected by white. Here, knight to h3, king g8, and bishop to c1, vacating the square for the knight. Rook after e8 now. Here, queen b5 from alpha 0. Improving the queen, attacking this, putting pressure here as well. So here, bishop b7 from stockfish, defending the knight. Rook to d1, the rook has done its job in the corner. And here, knight to a5. Perhaps intending to play knight to b3, which would make this queen feel a little bit unsafe in the enemy territory. So alpha 0 retreats back to b1. We have bishop c8, defending. And here, knight to f4, getting ready to land on this very nice square. Bishop g5 now from Stockfish, desperately trying to exchange off the knight, but white simply jumps in on g6. Bishop takes, queen takes c1. And after this trade, white's uh, trade of bishops, white's control of the dark squares become much stronger, especially the central squares. So white's uh, bishop is definitely much better than black's bishop. It's constantly putting pressure here on d5, uh, and black's bishop, on the other hand, is locked in by its own pawns. So here, bishop e6 played, knight to e5, attacking the queen, also planting it on a very nice square, queen c7, and here, rook to b2, another very nice maneuver from alpha 0, this time looking at d5. Knight back to b7. So if knight b3, this seems very logical, just blocking the rook from coming to b5. Here, uh, white can even contemplate sacrificing the exchange. And then queen b2, preparing to take on b3. This still looks very promising for alpha 0. Uh, the knight is definitely worth at least a rook in this position on this very nice central square. So here, knight b7 plate, rook to b5, pressuring here, knight back to a5. Stockfish seems like it doesn't have a clear plan. And now queen f4, and you can see that white has just lovely play on the dark squares. Knight b3 now, and knight to g6, offering a queen trait, but that is not the main purpose of this move. After queen to c6, Queen e5, further improving white's pieces. There I say this seems very Carlson-esque, except this is not a human playing, this is an AI. And notice that black can't really move the bishop to give discoveries because white always has knight to e7. So I should mention that here trading the queens only helps white. After knight takes f4, this would result in black having a lot of problems on d5, and this is very unpleasant to play. But back to the game. After queen e5, here queen to d7, stepping out of any possible forks. And alpha 0 just keeps improving its position. Here it plays e3, so that the rook no longer has a target on e2. This also frees up the bishop to move. Knight back to a5, and bishop to g2, so keeping options flexible, now white can choose to attack these targets on uh, d5 or f5 with his bishop. Knight to b7. Rook to a1. This is basically asking Stockfish, well, what is he going to do in this position? There's no question that black is tied down here. Stockfish played king h7. So he doesn't really have many good moves. For, for instance, if bishop f7, then here just queen f4. And if you try to remove the annoying knight, let's say bishop takes g6, then black will have difficulties holding on to d5. So if, let's say, knight back to a5, here then knight to f4, threatening to take here and then take on d5, so if knight c6 uh, seems like this uh, traps the queen, but here we have queen takes e6, very nice move. Rook takes, here bishop takes d5, 
and then you can take here and at the end of the variation white has d5 so this wins back the piece and white has two uh, rooks for the queen and this should be good for alpha zero so after uh, queen uh, sorry knight to f4 let's say what happens if bishop to f7 unleashing an attack on the queen so here white can play rook takes d5 so if rook takes e5 then you take on d7 and take on e5 and this e5 pawn is going to be quite dangerous so going back let's say here if you play this bishop takes d5 and after bishop takes d5 check king h8 bishop e6 is very annoying for black followed by taking the pawn and also here white has very nice central pawns so this should be pretty much winning for white so going back to the game, here king h7 played uh, after a1, king h7. We have knight to f4, so now threatening to take. Here bishop back to g8. So alpha 0 gave up the exchange, rook takes d5, queen takes, and knight to d6. So if queen takes d5, entering the endgame, this is going to be... Uh, the weakness on c4 is going to be quite unpleasant for a black to play. So here knight d6, we have bishop h3, putting pressure here, and black can hardly move in this position. Here he plays rook to e7, knight g6 attacking the rook, rook f7, knight e5, forking the rook and the queen, black escapes with queen b7, Bishop g2, queen takes, bishop takes d5, rook c7. So Stockfish has managed to keep his exchange. But with the queens off the board, and with white's strong central pawns, white has pretty decent winning chances. So here king g2, getting ready to bring the king into the center. Knight e4 plate, attacking c3. Now alpha 0 doesn't mind exchanging pieces he takes on e4. And here f3, a very nice move, which now gives white connected passers. So he, that is taken, king takes f3, rook e7. So white's knight, uh, white's strong knight here is definitely worth at least a rook in his position. Here he played knight g6, making way for this pawn to advance, rook to b7 e4 the pawns start rolling and this already looks lost for a black to be honest here he played b5 a takes rook takes knight to f4 rook b3 knight e2 defending here rook to a8 from stockfish 8 one last attempt from black trying to use the a pawn for a counterplay but here just e5 pushing the pawn a5 d5 a4, d6, a3, so these connected passes are very dangerous. Here, d7, white's pawns are too quick. King g8 played. Here, rook d1, supporting the pawn. Immediate threat is queening, so rook b to b8. e6, king f8. Knight d4, and in this position, stockfish 8, resign. One possible continuation is to go a2 for black, but here knight, f5, knight f5, if queen, then you can play e7 check, king f7, rook takes, rook takes, then you queen, here black can give a check on f1, but king g4, and there are no more checks for black, you can take, but here white takes back with a queen, and a knight, and this material advantage is going to be too much for black. So there you have it, a very interesting game from Alpha Zero. I quite enjoyed that uh, maneuver in the middle game where Alpha Zero went king to h2 and rook to h1. I thought that was just ingenious. So I hope you enjoyed this game as well. As usual, if you enjoyed my content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.